Hello YouTube, today I'm going to be showing you an updated Ceridomin encampment guide. This was the method I used to grind all the way to 200 mil invention. So what is Ceridomin encampment? Ceridomin encampment is basically a God Wars dungeon minion room for Commander Ziliana. A fast way to get here is via the max guild boss portal, which will then teleport you one room before Ziliana. For those who aren't maxed, the other fast way to get here is the God Wars dungeon teleport tablet, which requires the mighty fall quest complete. It will teleport you outside the God Wars dungeon. So go in and walk southeast. You'll need 70 agility to traverse the cliff though. The other requirement for this method is 83 slayer to kill the spiritual mages inside. The Ceridomin encampment is a fairly dangerous place, as I understand that not everyone's capable of surviving here. This is because you're letting all the monsters attack you at once. This makes the monsters cluster, which optimizes AoE abilities. That being said, it is highly recommended that you have high melee combat stats. Overloads, Soul Split, and Turmoil are strictly recommended here. You may also want 96 summoning here for a pack yak, so you can loot all the drops and store them. But otherwise a clan avatar is okay. In my equipment setup I have Ghost Hunter Helmet and Ghost Hunter Cape. Previously I wore 3 pieces of Ghost Hunter, but they're not augmentable. What this armor actually does is it increases damage and combat XP against ghosts, including spiritual mages. That being said, Salve Amulet is your best choice for amulet. Since the middle of February 2016, this amulet now works against spiritual mages. Leviathan Ring also proves helpful here, as it has a small chance of reducing incoming damage. The key to survival is Scrimshaw of Vampirism. I don't believe it's possible to survive without this, so please bring one or else this method cannot be done effectively. What the Scrimshaw does is it heals back damage as you deal damage. So in comparison to the Aura though, it has no healing cap. Shot of Xeros should be equipped right before you enter, because this will give you time to prepare, such as drinking potions, and turning on prayers, or even hopping worlds. The auras I suggest here are Vampirism, Penance, Inspiration, and Equilibrium Aura. Basically this is the following aura priority. If you don't have any of the auras, don't worry you can still survive without them. Just helps with convenience though. There are various choices for augmenting gear. For dismantling, Crystal Halberd and Ganodermic armor are the best choice. Ganodermic is currently and will most probably be the cheapest, even in the long term. It might sound strange to wear magic armor with melee, but the amount of accuracy you lose for that is not very detrimental. Using a crystal halberd, the above equipment with turmoil and overloads, you should hit around 95% of the time against spiritual mages. However, against Ceridomin priests, you'll sometimes splash, but don't worry, there aren't too many of them here. With higher tier halberds, you won't splash at all. If you're siphoning instead, I would suggest you bring a higher tier halberd, such as Noxious Scythe. With the release of God Wars Dungeon 2, Dragon Rider Lance is a great alternative choice. It acts as tier 80 damage with tier 90 accuracy. For armor, I would suggest either Superior Tetsu or Bandos. I didn't suggest Torva because it removes the aggression from the entire encampment as it functions as God Wars protection. With all that being said, it's up to you to decide whether it's better to siphon or dismantle. You can also try mixing and matching, such as by siphoning a scythe but dismantling Ganodermic armor. The best perk setup I would suggest are Efficient and Enlightened. Efficient perk reduces charge drain rates, while Enlightened increases gear XP, thus leveling gear faster. Scavenging perk is also amazing here, as you're going to kill a bunch of creatures. What this perk does is that there's a small chance of fetching uncommon components. Other helpful perks are Lucky, Impatient, Precise, Equilibrium, and Undead Slayer. It's not really needed, as these monsters have fairly low HP anyways. So in summary, I would suggest using Efficient and Enlightened on all your gear. Both of these perks only work on the gear it is attached to, so to be simplistic, just fill all your slots with both of them each. It's all up to you on this, so feel free to mix and match. In my inventory setup, I have one Supreme Overload and one Replenishment Potion. If you're area looting, just bring Alk Runes, Gem Bag, and Spring Cleaner. I would set mine to destroy rune items only. I personally don't mind looting Battle Staves and Alking them. Maxscape is helpful for banking all the loot by teleporting to the Max Guild. I mean if you aren't maxed, looting may not be efficient for you. A 2 Nectoplasmator when killing ghosts will give you prayer XP, and combined with Demon Horn Necklace, which is also in my inventory, will also restore prayer. Just swap out for Demon Horn Necklace when you're at low prayer. Enhanced Excalibur is also another healing source. You may wonder why I didn't bring food this time, but this is because I didn't eat at all. If you're new to this, just bring a couple of pieces of food. Ring of Vigor Swap is useful for saving adrenaline when hitting an ultimate ability. Bone Crusher is in my tool belt, so that way I can filter out bone drops when I'm area looting. I didn't bring Weapon Poison this time, because Invention Gear XP is based on the amount of damage the weapon has done, 
so poison makes it worse. The prayer I'm using is Turmoil and Soul Split. Previously I suggested to use Zaylots, but Salve Amulet now works against spiritual mages, so it's now better to use Turmoil. Soul Split is better than Deflect Mage, since this and Scrimshaw of Ampersum can keep you nearly at full HP. For my action bar, I have Cleave on the first slot. The rest of my basic abilities are just to fill in the rotation. Barge sometimes helps here for quick navigation. For thresholds, just focus on Hurricane and Quake as often as possible. For ultimates, try to save Adrenaline for Meteor Strike. If you do get good at this method however, you can try Berserk like I did here, but otherwise don't do it as it's extremely dangerous. Alright so here's the strategy. Make sure you have your Shard of Zeros equipped before you enter. Once you drank your potions and turn on your prayers, switch on the Scrimshaw of Amprism and start tagging the monsters. Basically you want to spam AoE abilities and cluster the monsters together. Sometimes auto retaliate forces you to run to a corner. If that happens, just cancel the movement and tag the nearest monster. In general, try to stay as close to the middle of the encampment as possible to optimize AoE damage. Also, if you do fall to low HP, don't panic unless all your AoE abilities are on cooldown because one blast of AoE abilities heals back a huge chunk of health. You'll need to renew aggression every 10 minutes, so just exit and enter the encampment. With area looting, you just want to loot whenever you see a huge pile of drops. Due to a recent update, you can now press spacebar to loot all the drops. Just drag and drop the useless junk. Any decent value items, you can simply drag it to your pack yak to store it for you. You must have the familiar interface open first. The drops are surprisingly amazing here. While area looting makes it extremely click intensive, it is well worth it as these drops can easily pay back for the cost of augmentation and divine charges. It also does not significantly affect your XP per hour, so I highly advise looting. For those without max cape teleport, you can try other quick teleport methods to bank drops, such as Takozo or house tablets. The cost per hour all depends on whether you're siphoning or dismantling, and what tier weapons or armor you're using. Prices change a lot, so this may vary. If you're dismantling Crystal Halberd and Ganodermic armor, it will cost you 4.5 mil an hour. The huge portion of the cost is from Ganodermic body. You might think it sounds like it's a lot, but these drops do add up to well over 5 mil an hour. So you can expect a very marginal loss, sometimes profit actually. I was actually able to profit even when Ganodermic flakes and Crystal Weapon Seeds were on their peaks. If you're siphoning, it's much cheaper as you only have to pay for the cost of siphon. So how does this compare against cannoning Eretz? Well, I'll list the advantages of Ceradamon encampment over Eretz. For one thing, it has a cheaper dismantling cost per hour. At Eretz, you're limited to melee armor due to their high defense. It also uses less supplies, such as cannonballs. There's a lower risk of death here, because having 5 Eretz on you is going to be hard to tank. Also, no noxious scythe is needed, so you can use lower level alternatives like I'm doing here. It's also easier to find a world here, because I camped this spot for many hours without a single visitor. Last but not least, there's no looting drama, because people aren't going to come here and clean up drops for you. So what are the disadvantages however? Well, there's a huge major disadvantage, and that is lower invention and combat XP per hour. Eretz can average well over 1.2 mil combat XP per hour. Their drops are actually much more valuable because of their bones. So Eretz or Ceradamon Encampment? The choice comes down to whether you prefer fastest expensive method or cheaper yet slightly slower method. Another comparison is Abyss. I would pretty much suggest the Abyss if you're struggling with this method as it's way more AFK. However, Abyss is more crowded and sometimes PKers wait for you. So can this method be done effectively with other combat styles? I have seen people use magic here, but no, other combat styles are not really effective here. I mean, there's still decent XP, but it's much harder to survive the entire encampment attacking you at once, without Scrimshaw of Amprism. If you find it easy to survive with major range, then yeah, use this method. I was able to get 220k melee XP in 16 minutes. That equates to 825k melee XP per hour. If you're dismantling Crystal Halberd and Ganodermic armor, you would get 46.5k weapon XP and 62k XP on both armor pieces combined. Based on the formula from my invention guide, this totals to 1.3 mil XP per hour. If you're siphoning the above equipment, you can expect 640k. I won't do any more calculations, so just refer to my invention guide if you need a formula. So overall, this method is fast, yet cost friendly at the same time. I would personally recommend this to anyone who wants to rush this skill. I apologize for yet another long video. Despite my previous guide, I still got a lot of questions. 
So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope it helps. If I missed anything, feel free to ask.